time graph involving time here because since this is a dynamic model of equilibrium it must be quite useful to look at a time plot so scale and time let's look at the price and this graph here corresponds to this so first of all I start off at time 0 at this level this is P0 okay eventually at some point I'm gonna reach P star let's say let's say first of all just my uh, let's get a nicer graph than this I'm trying to show things make them nice and large uh, that's it. is that large enough okay let's say that this is no that's not nice enough okay I'm back again let's say here now let's say this is P star doesn't matter where I stick it so long as it's above zero so what this says is I uh, I am start P0 but in the next time period I drop since this is the equilibrium P star I drop below equilibrium so let's say P1 is here but this will be in the next period then it says I got here to P2 and P2 now is above equilibrium so you can see what's going to happen let's draw this line to show you that is the equilibrium P star right all this line is P star you can see that over time this is what's doing high below above equilibrium price below equilibrium price above below above until eventually over time it settles down and because it reaches P star at this point is when it suddenly hits that line and stays there you can imagine similarly the thing is going to happen with quantity as well so I could replace this PT by QT and it's going to look the same both prices and quantity they're just in a fluctuating manner above and below fluctuating above and below the equilibrium point but over time it reaches it given certain under certain circumstances okay so cobweb model is um, is a model is a dyna is a dynamic model of equilibrium explains how prices and quantity reach an equilibrium point but it doesn't mean that this model is applicable always it doesn't always hold and we're going to see an example of this later on now in our classes we're interested to describe how the prices change over time and there is an equation for that which I'm going to write down now okay so we present only the linear case that is when the line for supply set and demand set of a straight line we call the formula of a straight line so here this is a straight line isn't it with uh, intercept of minus a and slope of b but that is for the supply curve demand curve like this and we need the condition that b and d is bigger than zero because these the b and d determine the slope of the, the uh, inverse supply and inverse demand remember this line here is the graph of the inverse supply this is of the inverse demand because they're both functions of Q in other words uh, we have to rearrange this for P if we want the inverse supply and inverse demand but if we do that we will find that the slope of the inverse supply is 1 over B and the slope of the inverse demand is 1 over D okay that's why we need B and D bigger than 0 Uh, well I made a mistake slightly here uh, yeah B and D have to be big and zero I should have put a minus here look because the slope of the inverse supply is positive being 1 over B upward sloping QP the slope of the inverse demand is negative the slope being 1 over D negative 1 over D and that's why D must be positive because if, if D was negative two negatives makes a positive that would be the wrong slope okay 
Next, I present the general solution without, I'll just give you the result without the proof because in this applied course we just need to know how to use it. General solution for the price is equal to the time independent solution. That's P star, in other words, that is the equilibrium price, plus the P0, that's the initial price, minus the equilibrium price, times by minus B over D, where both B and D are positive, yeah? So, in other words, and this is always going to be minus a positive number to the power of T time. And that's where what we have for P star, that's the equilibrium point. Similarly for quantity, now I know this has not been presented in lectures, but hey, who knows, they could ask you for it, couldn't they? Huh? So here is a similar one for the quantity, which also fluctuates from the picture that I've shown you earlier, where the Q star is this. Now, does, the equilibri does this uh, cobweb model always reach an equilibrium? If it does, we say that it, the, we have a stable, a stable solution, or the market equilibrium is stable. Otherwise, the market equilibrium is not stable. In other words, if we start off at a point which is not equilibrium, where uh, the cobweb model uh, doesn't get us to the equilibrium. Right. So what must happen is that we can we can get it from these equations. Let's press focus on the price. So somehow we want PT to eventually reach P star over time. Okay. So we have to look at the term. So there's two terms here. This plus second term. First term, P star does not depend on time, so there's no point looking at it. This second term is made up of a product. P0 minus P star does not depend on time, so it just remains constant over time. So it's only this guy here which changes over time. Yeah. So when does PT, how does, when is it the case that PT will reach P star? It must mean that over time this number gets smaller and smaller and smaller, so you're timesing a number that's smaller and smaller and smaller by a number, so this second term eventually tends to zero. Well, when does that happen? That will happen if the number B is less than the number D. Okay? And then if B is less than D, it must mean that this fraction is less than 1, and any number which is a fraction uh, less than 1 to the power of t will tend to 0. Try it on your calculator.